Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading once again from our good friend Johnny Erickson Tata's More Precious Than Silver. And she begins this devotional uh, writing with a, a quote of scripture, one of my favorite verses in the New Testament book of uh, John, John's Gospel, John 14, 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Pretty tall claim there for Jesus, isn't it? When you stop and just think about it, listen to it for a second. He's essentially saying he is the same as God. If you can trust in God, you can trust in him. And that's why? Because Jesus is the son of God. Um, and it's one of those times where we get some insight into his own uh, self-understanding, um, his um, awareness that he's here on a very specific mission to bring God's salvation and that he knows he's going to have to lay down his life. And he's saying this uh, to them before he goes to the cross. It'd be one thing if he had already risen from the dead, but here he is in John 14, not yet to the cross, and he's saying, I know that this world is full of brokenness. I know this world is full of chaos. And the tension had been building between Jesus and all of the religious leaders, between uh, Jesus' disciples and all the religious leaders. And so they felt probably a lot of the same kind of tension uh, that we living in our own modern day world feel right now uh, with the great division and uh, uh, all of the, 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 the te tension and acrimony and, and the rancor uh, of our culture right now. But here comes Jesus into all of that, knowing that he's going to lay down his life and he's concerned for the heart's of his disciples. And I want you to know he is still concerned for the hearts of his disciples, yours and mine, even in this day and time. Well, Johnny Erickson Tata does such a great job um, uh, not only amplifying scripture and the, and the principles of scripture, but turning our hearts toward Jesus. Here's what she has to say uh, in this particular devotional. Spring fulfills a promise given before winter that life will return. Wait and you'll see, the tangled bare branches seem to say in late autumn, life will return in full green. The assurance that spring will come back helps us make it through the drearier days of winter. The same promise of return is often spoken between loved ones. Every little girl has heard it from her mom at the nursery door. Every beloved has heard it from her husband at the airport. Every mother has heard it from her soldier son. During such partings, promises of soon returns are spoken because the one leaving seeks peace for the one being left. I'll be back must be said or no peace will be found. The words are not enough, however. I love the honesty with which Johnny so often speaks. Um, uh, just really sets us free to rest in and trust God's promises. Um, especially, you know, given all that she's been through, given all that we've been through, uh, to know that God is there, that he is our refuge and our strength, that he is a rock for us to stand upon. So, so important. Uh, only when the hearer truly believes does the promise become effectual. Assurance of a reunion has a calming influence. Such was the peace that calmed the disciples when Jesus left them. He told them that their hearts should not be troubled, that they should wait, that he would come back to get them, just as he would come back for you and for me. His resurrection must have had a profound effect on the disciples' ability to believe. After Jesus went up into the clouds, as he's ascending back, and we read about that, uh, of course, in the early, uh, the first chapter of the book of Acts. After Jesus went up into the clouds, they recalled 
that he not only promised his resurrection, but delivered on that promise. The immense peace that settled on them was evident as they obeyed his command to wait for the Holy Spirit and then to go out and declare the gospel. Oh yeah, that would have emboldened them, wouldn't it? That someone can make good on their promises, you know? And we've all been let down by somebody at some point uh, in our lives. Uh, maybe it's in something really small, but, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's in something pretty big. Somebody made a promise, didn't live up to it, and it cost us greatly, or we felt betrayed, or we felt rejected in some way. And so Johnny does such a great job here of pointing us to uh, not only the promise of Jesus, but the trustworthiness of Jesus. He asks, uh, Johnny rather, asks a couple questions here at the end of this uh, daily devotional reading. How does Jesus's assurance that he will be back affect you? And I know we, we don't talk about it a lot in our own day and time. We, I think we've gotten too sophisticated or something. I'm not sure what it is, but there are almost a couple of hundred allusions to the return of Christ in the New Testament alone. Um, the Christian faith is a very forward-looking faith. And um, uh, the promises of God to come back one day and set the world to rights are so hope-filled, mostly because God is trustworthy. And we see that in what he's done in Christ, in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So how does Jesus' assurance that he will be back affect you? It should give rise to great hope in our hearts, to joy even, to uh, an overflow uh, of anticipation as we not only look backwards to his fr the first advent or his first arrival, but look forward in time to his second advent, his second appearing, uh, his return, as Johnny has uh, uh, phrased it here. Another question she asks at the end is, which of his words could you concentrate on that would help you to believe? And remember his, uh, his words to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. And that's, boy, that, that is something I need to remind myself over and over again. If I just allow my spiritual life to drift or the disposition of my heart to drift or the condition of my faith to drift, uh, nothing good ever comes from drift. Uh, and I, lo I, I love our, our conversation among our staff at the Village Chapel um, Pastor Matt Pearson's been talking a lot about the, the spiritual disciplines or the spiritual practices, as some people call them, and how they are <clears throat> our proactive engagement of placing ourselves before God so God can transform us, so God can uh, grant us the gift of faith to trust him and to believe in him. We, we read our Bibles. We spend time in prayer. We we, we go out and serve, we, we give of our, our time, our resources. All of these things that we do, these spiritual practices and disciplines we do, uh, simply because uh, they do put us before the Lord and then the Lord begins to fill us with hope and the Lord begins to fill us with the kind of courage we need to face each and every day. Which of his words could you concentrate on that would help you to believe? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Or that, yes, certainly. Or trust in God. Or trust also in me. Um, so important. All three of those statements, so important. One last question from Johnny. What signs of spring has God tucked into your winter? And I know, I've, I've, I've talked with folks here, even at the Village Chapel lately. After the long Good Friday year, as uh, as our curate at the Village Chapel, Kim, uh, my sweet wife, has reminded us in that beautiful prayer from Easter, um, even after all of that, the signs of spring that God has tucked into our winter, our 
cold season, our season where we wondered if it would ever come to an end and if there would ever be springtime again. And I love the, the regularity of God's creation, reminding me, though, of something much greater than the regularity of creation, reminding me of the faithfulness of God. Well, Johnny closes with a prayer, and I'll, I'll read this as our prayer as we close out this day, too. Creator of all seasons, open our eyes to promises of new life slipped into even the dreariest of situations. Give us the ability to believe they are harbingers of the good things you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.